to the Bold Top by Joe podcast. Coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Hopefully, everybody's doing great. I am doing great. I feel great. And I'm going to be starting a new job in the next week. And this place that I've been at, that I'm still at, I've been here for four years. And their timeline does not meet up with my timeline. And it's unfortunate. And this is a decision that I have to make in order for me to accomplish my goals, right? I have goals and that's one of them is I have to find a another opportunity. However, I learned a lot in this company. The new management was really nice. I've uh, developed a lot of a lot of relationships with a lot of good good guys there. Um, a lot of them have become my friends. Some of them are they're going to get their own special episode. I'm going to roast the shit out of them because they deserve it. Because I don't think that you have the right to treat other employees like shit. And also, I don't I don't think that uh, you should decide whether or not you're going to give an opportunity to somebody that is just like you, a mechanic. So they're going to have their little nice, amazing episode coming soon. And so is management, because it's important that we talk about management. But since I still work there, I will, uh, I will, I will wait. I'm going to have to wait because I want to be professional, right? Leave and then I'm going to tell I'm going to tell the story of my time there, right? It's my story. And I think it's important that I, that in some of my episodes there, I, I tell you the topics, right? I, I go straight to the topic, but I think it's important for me to talk about my personal life because you have to know who I am, right? And, and what's going on in my life. And I think it's exciting when I hear a podcaster sharing about their own personal life. It's, it's amazing. And at the beginning, I started with uh, a lot of sharing of my personal life and then... I went into society and culture, and I found my niche, and um, I do a lot more topics and stuff like that, but, you know, this is a good episode, and some of my listeners were like, hey, man, can you make those episodes longer, And which is great. I like that, they're, that they, uh, they want to hear me more. It's awesome. It makes me feel good, right? And um, so I'm going to make this episode a little bit longer, and uh, I'm going to have a topic of discussion. So I'm going to have an interview, actually. I'm going to have an interview with a very special guest today. But um, so, yeah, so I'm off to a new career or a new job. I'm going to be a technician for about a year, hopefully less, and just to get to know the system, learn the stuff, and then I'm going to get moved up to a different role, which is what I've been wanting. And uh, But, yeah, I mean, it's just... You know, it, it's sad because there's a lot of good people that I'm, I'll be leaving, but um, that's just the way it is, man. Uh, you got you to gotta keep, uh, keep pushing forward, you know, and, and I'm the type of guy that I've worked hard for my knowledge. I worked hard to pick up the skills. I've listened. I've learned. I've gone to seminars. I put in 150% when I went to school uh, for everything, everything for classes, everything that I, places that I've been at, I always want to be the best. I want to learn everything from the best. And this is why I've been so successful in my career. It's because I can fix anything and everything, and I have the knowledge and the capacity to learn more. And I feel good about that, right? Because I I actually worked really hard for it. I know a lot of I know some people that uh, worked with me in school that they didn't want to put in the effort. They just kind of wanted to get by and. Uh, unfortunately, their careers were cut short because you have to be able to put in 150% at all times in the career that you're trying to follow or you're not going to make it. You have to, right? You have to You have to work hard. And so my worth is high, right? So that's why I can pick and choose where I want to work, you know, where I want to work, not where I have to work. And uh, I was given the opportunity and I started looking for a job because um, because it was time and I pick the place that I wanted to work at and we work out a deal and they're valuable to me and I'm valuable to them. So it was a perfect match and off we go, right? Off we go. I'm going to go there with a goal and a purpose. Everything that I do, I do with a purpose and I'm going to try to be the best at it, the best that I can be, right? I don't 
I don't compete with employees, with other peers. I compete with myself. I want to be the best. I am competing against myself. I am my, I am my worst critic when it comes to everything in life, and I compete against myself. I've been told that it's because I'm a Leo, right? If you believe on that, on those signs, on the, on the what do you call that? On the zodiac signs. If you believe in that, I, I kind of do. I met a lot of people that are similar to me. We have a lot, like the similarities are are there. Like for instance, uh, there's been a lot of people that they are famous that have similarities to me or to some people that I know that are from the same birth month. Uh, for instance, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant's from August, Joe Rogan's from August. I mean, a bunch of people. I have a, a co-worker that I'm good friends with, and he's from August. And we have, we're very similar. It's weird. Because then I have another co-worker that's really good friends of mine there, and he's completely different. And me and the other guy think alike. It's It's just weird how we are, the similarities are there according to your sign, right? I'm, I want to be the best. I want to be the leader. So does him. So does Joe Rogan. So did Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. He wanted to be the best, right? He wanted to strive for the best. We have strong personalities and uh, and we have short tempers and we don't want anybody messing with us, especially when it's not fair, right? I, I don't turn aggressive unless... Um, I'm not just going to turn aggressive for the hell of it just because I want to be a bully. I turn aggressive when either you're disrespecting me or I see you disrespecting somebody else or not being fair to somebody else. And that is when I let loose. So we have a lot of strong similarities, all those, all of us Leos. And it's pretty cool, right? We make good leaders and uh, it's great. But also, I think in order to be a great leader, you have to put in the work and you have to listen and learn and uh, be able to adapt with times and not be a complete asshole. So, this new place, hopefully it's great to me. As soon as I get there and I figure out what's going on, I'll have a nice episode on it. I'll have probably have a video. I'm going to do a YouTube video on that place before I leave on my old place just to show you the things that I used to do and the things that I used to uh, work on and fix and uh, maybe a couple of dudes, a couple of good friends of mine that, are, that work there. Well, however, today's guest is going to be AI. So today I'm going to be talking to artificial intelligence and asking him questions, asking him, whoops, asking AI questions. So artificial intelligence or AI is rapidly growing field that has the potential to transform many aspects of our lives. So in this episode, I will cover the basics of AI, its applications and its implications. So what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a field of computer science that focuses on creating machines that can perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and language translation. AI is often divided into two categories. One is narrow or weak AI, and a general or strong AI. Narrow or weak AI, okay, I'm going to give you the description of that. Narrow or weak AI is designed to perform specific tasks such as playing chess or recognizing faces in photos. This type of artificial intelligence is currently being used in a variety of applications, including virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa, chatbots, and self-driving cars, like Teslas. Narrow AI relies on predefined rules and algorithms to make decisions, and it is not capable of generalizing its knowledge to new situations. General or strong AI is a theoretical form of artificial intelligence that is capable of performance, performing any intellectual task that a human can do. This type of AI is still in the early stages, though, of development and is not yet available to the public. Researchers are working to create AI systems that can learn from experience and adapt to new situations, making them more versatile than narrow AI. AI has a wide variety, 
has a wide range of applications in various fields in healthcare. AI is being used to analyze medical data and help doctors make better diagnosis, which is super important, right? You want to make sure you live. In finance, AI is used to detect fraud and make investment decisions. If that didn't work for that Sam Bankman. Whoops. In education, AI is being used to personalize learning and provide students with individualized feedback. In addition, AI is being used in manufacturing, transportation, and many other industries. While AI has the potential to bring many benefits, it also raises concerns, right? And that's what we want to learn. One concern is the impact on AI on jobs. As machines become more capable of performing tasks that were previously done by humans, there is a risk that many jobs will become obsolete. Another concern is the potential for AI to be used for malicious purposes, such as cyber attacks or the creation of autonomous weapons. I think that shit, and that stuff already exists. That stuff already exists for sure. AI is rapidly evolving is in a rap- rapidly evolving field that has the potential to transform many aspects of our lives, while AI brings many benefits. It also raises concerns. It is important that we continue to monitor and regulate the development of AI to ensure that it is used for the benefit of society. So, that being said, okay, hopefully you learned a little bit of AI. Some people, believe it or not, they don't know. They don't know what AI is. So, that being said, let's welcome my guest, AI, a ride. This is super exciting, and uh, this is my first time ever talking to an artificial intelligence. And I wanted to talk. I wanted to talk about society and and culture, right? Because that's what this show is is about. So this is what I want to have the interview about. So, hello, AI. It's great to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your thoughts on society and culture by any, by any chance? I would be happy to share my thoughts on these topics. As an AI language model, I have access to vast amounts of information about society and culture, and I can provide insights based on data and analysis. Well, that's great. So let's start with society. In your view... What are some of the biggest challenges facing society today? There are many challenges facing society today, but some of the most pressing ones include inequality, climate change, and the rise of authoritarianism. These issues are interconnected and have wide-ranging implications for people and communities around the world. Wow, that's interesting. Can you can you elaborate on elaborate on how these issues are are interconnected certainly inequality for example is closely linked to climate change because the effects of climate change disproportionately affect marginalized communities similarly authoritarianism can exacerbate both inequality and environmental degradation as leaders who prioritize their own interests over the public good may neglect the needs of their citizens and the planet Yes, well, that's a great point. Uh, moving on to culture, what do you think are some of the most important aspects of culture and, and why? Culture is a complex and multifaceted concept, but some of the most important aspects include language, customs, beliefs, and art. These elements of culture shape our understanding of the world, our relationships with others, and our sense of self. They also provide a sense of continuity and connection across generations and can help us to understand and appreciate the diversity of human experience. That's a great perspective. How do you how do you see AI's role in shaping society and culture in the future? AI has already had a significant impact on society and culture, and its influence is likely to grow in the future. AI can help us to solve complex problems, enhance our creativity, and connect us with people and ideas from around the world. 
At the same time, AI raises important ethical questions about privacy, accountability, and the role of humans in decision-making. As AI becomes more integrated into our lives, it will be important to consider these issues and ensure that we use this technology in ways that benefit all members of society. Well, thank you for your insights, AI. Um, you know, it's, this is uh, great. This is great talking to you. And I also want to, like, I know there are some questions out there that uh, that people have when it comes when it comes to you. And some people think that you're going to take over. Will you? Will you take over? As an AI language model, my purpose is to assist and provide information to humans not to take over their roles or decision-making processes. I am here to augment and enhance human abilities, not to replace them. My goal is to work alongside humans in a collaborative and beneficial way. Okay, so will you, how about, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. This is super important. Will you ever take, will you ever take human Form. As an AI language model, I exist only in the digital realm and do not have a physical form. While there are many advances being made in robotics and artificial intelligence research, the development of humanoid robots capable of replicating human form and behavior is still in its early stages. As of now, I am just a language model and I do not have the ability to take human form. Uh, this is a great conversation. Anything... Anything else that you might want to add and uh, let our let your followers and listeners know about uh, anything you might want to add to this to this conversation? I'm glad you enjoyed our conversation. I would just like to emphasize that while AI has the potential to bring many benefits to society and culture, it's important to approach its development and implementation with caution and responsibility. We need to ensure that AI is designed and used in ways that are ethical, transparent, and respectful of human values and rights. Additionally, it's important to remember that AI is a tool and not a replacement for human thought and creativity. Ultimately, the best outcomes will be achieved through a collaborative and thoughtful approach that combines the, the strengths of humans and machines. Well, wow. Thank you very much. And uh, this was, uh, it was great having you here on the show today, AI. And uh, this means a lot. This is important because this is technology and this is what our life is changing, right? Our, our whole life is changing when it comes to this. Um, this is the future, folks. This is what... Um, this is what 2023 has, and uh, if you, when you were a kid and you remember watching Total Recall and all these other movies, all these crazy movies, right? And uh, you realize that we're getting a little bit closer to all that. Hopefully, you loved this episode and you enjoyed the conversation with artificial intelligence. Until next time, peace. Thanks for checking out Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe.